the conversation with the network had kind of never stopped. It was a subtle conversation for many years. Um, you know, when we uh, went off the air uh, five years ago, it was a very different time. It was um, the the audience had oddly <laughs> shifted to all sorts of the paradigm shift of how people were consuming content had really begun on a, on you know, and Heroes was. I think, you know, right at the forefront of that paradigm shift. And so we, we were, uh, when we were canceled, we were canceled because our ratings had, had dropped. And coincidentally, at the same time that they had dropped, um, our, our last calendar year of the show, um, we were the number one most downloaded show in the world, um, mostly illegally, of course. Um, we were the number one most streamed show. Um, I think the number three most DVR'd show on, on television and sold, you know, a couple mil million units of DVDs. And um, uh, so c trying to reconcile that with the idea that the ratings had dropped, the ratings had dropped because of all those statistics. Um, the audience simply was migrating in different ways. <clears throat> and the network, I think, really struggled with how to, you know, rather than canceling a failed television show they were they they were canceling a brand that was still pretty potent obviously and so I think you know uh, that discussion internally was always there and, and and when and when it became clear that you could now count some of those viewers and and that you could factor in the live plus and the DVR and some of the video on demand and the other ways that people are watching then the brand suddenly became very viable again and so that's kind of how it came about so that was a quiet conversation over the years well that's the interesting part we left off the series at a really dramatic moment when uh, Claire Bennett the cheerleader in the last moment of the final episode basically outs herself to the world that she has these powers. She jumps off of a high top of a Ferris wheel in front of news cameras and now the whole world knows. So for four seasons we had gone where uh, nobody knew about these powers. It was completely underground. Now the whole world knew and we ended our, our series. And um, so we pick up five years later or the exact amount of time that has passed for the audience is the amount of time that our story has passed. So whatever that is, five years or so. And so when we come back, the world has now had five years to deal with the idea that there are people with powers. And human nature being what it is, um, we're positing the idea that it didn't go well. And um, so these people who are, uh, have powers have now been labeled as EVOs, evolved humans. So there's now a there never had to be a label for them because nobody knew them. So now EVOs are, are persecuted and exploited and hunted and haunted and living you know in you know under a rock if they can so that we pick up our story with that being the world that that, go, that, that they inhabit and uh, we introduce the idea of a major event that's coming a catastrophic event and our heroes need to save the world but this time they have to save it while being hunted and and persecuted and so it, it's a it's a more cranked up version of, of what of what the show was uh, I think the last time there was a kind of a warning bell that was going off that the world needs saving this time it's really an alarm bell it's and I think that really um, fits sort of where we are you know as a as a globe <laughs> We were really at the forefront of a lot of the kind of multi-platform storytelling. And a lot of that was just out of necessity. We were just trying to figure out how to fish where the fish are, you know. They were, the audience seemed to be migrating to all these devices and all that. And we, we were like, well, if we want to reach them, let's send story that direction. And this time, it's a much more targeted uh, uh, approach. And because we had the ability to plan it, which last time, frankly, we didn't. We were just, kept, we were just playing catch up constantly with the audience. Um, this time we sort of planned ahead and this intervening five years I, I sort of looked at, at, at this Heroes Reborn is not the fifth season of the original series I look at it actually as more like the tenth season 
and there's a missing five years of story. And it gave us this kind of fertile ground for, to play with. And so the extensions that we're doing for the narrative are, we, we have two video games that we are launching, a premium next generation video games. One tablet, mobile tablet game, the other is a console game. And those games actually unpack some of that missing story that happened in the intervening five years. We are launching six uh, e-books. These are, are novellas written by, by you know, best-selling New York Times authors. Um, and these also unpack and go into detail of the backstory of some of the new characters. Um, we have a whole series of comic books that are coming out. Uh, we, had, we did a digital prequel called Dark Matters that we launched at Comic-Con with an app. We have this beautiful app that NBC uh, has launched, the Heroes Reborn app, that allows you to, to watch not only the original show, but all of the new content. You can divide it up by characters. And it's, really, it's really pretty fabulous. So the, the whole idea is that, you know, I, I always felt that the Heroes brand was bigger than a television show. And this allows the fans who want a deeper dive into the, to the world of it <clears throat> to, to, you know, play these games and read these books and, you know, and, and really immerse themselves in that world. Well, this was really the, de the, the big, you know, dilemma with Heroes Reborn was how much, how much to make it, uh, if, if, how much to make it like the old and how much to move forward. I mean, that really was a, and you want, I, I really very much wanted it to be its own idea. Um, I, I've always felt that the Heroes brand was elastic enough to have all kinds of characters and all kinds of stories and it could grow outside of the original cast of characters. That being said, the loyal fans of the show, we really wanted to honor their, their involvement and their commitment and their attachment to the original series. So you want to honor them by having enough in this new one to say that it wasn't a waste of your time to watch four seasons of this show. But at the same time, you have a chance to get all kinds of new viewers. So this was, the, this was both the dilemma and the challenge of this, is how to have it. I, I sort of look at it as a kind of a bridge. Uh, by having the character Noah Bennett, the man with the horn rim glasses, at sort of the center of the plot, he is a, a kind of bridge character. And we start with a premise where he has had a part of his memory erased, and he has to figure out what he forgot. And by him trying to figure out what he forgot, the new viewers get to follow his journey of discovery to kind of unpack the mythology of the former show. But the old viewers of the show are just, they get all kinds of Easter eggs and things that they know. and. It's that feeling like you're in on the joke a little bit. So this was always this was always the challenge. In Heroes Reborn, we have uh, f you know five or six of the original cast members will make appearances in it, and these are not um, other than Jack Coleman, uh, Noah Bennett. Um, these are small smaller parts. They come in for two or three episodes at a time, and I think that by the time this is over, we will have handed off. To, uh, to mostly these new, these new characters, and then we can move on to you know, continue to, to refresh it with new characters, but bring in the old ones as needed. You don't get many second chances. This brand for me was, and this, this world, this universe, was, was also a chance for me to, um, to put them, you know, there's a message underneath all of it, and um, that that's always driven me. This idea of of hope and and uh, global consciousness and interconnectivity. The idea that if we uh, if we find each other and connect, we can do great things, and and that's always been a really important piece of this. And to the extent that I have a, a mission statement in my life, it's about using you know, using narrative and archetypal narrative to create and promote positive change in the world. And that's something that, you know, I, I have this rare platform to be able to speak to people about that.